What's going on everybody? JR from JR's Cars here. And today on this nice, wonderfully cold and windy day, I'm deciding that it's about time to get these brake lines going on the Yukon. So stay tuned and I'm going to show you what I'm doing here. So like I said there, um, I'm going to be working on the brake lines because um, in the state of New Jersey, we have to make appointments in order to um, in order to get the titling and the registration done on the cars. And I have that set up for next week um, because they're scheduling so far in advance right now. It's crazy. Um, I've had the truck for about two weeks now and I haven't been able to do anything with it. So I want to try and see if I can get it done before, of course, I go and title and register it so I can actually drive it. Um, so what I did was I, I figured I was, I, I wanted to try to see if I could just make the lines. I've, I've done it a thousand times before. Um, I wanted to just get a, a, a coil of um, brake lines and get the fittings and make it myself and everything else. It's just too damn cold outside to be doing this right now. So what I found was Dorman makes a kit and it's a stainless steel kit. Um, the the stainless steel kit for this truck um, was it was like a hundred and three dollars or something like that um, and then you know I, I bought them on Amazon so I'm a Prime member so it was free uh, free shipping and everything too so it was like a hundred and three dollars to have pre bent pre made um, brake lines for the truck it was it was just a win win situation. Um, I didn't have to make the, I, I don't, I don't have to make the lines at all, at least, you know, now it's more or less just getting the old crap out and putting the new ones in and bleeding the lines out and getting that all squared away. So if you're looking to do this for the, uh, the Yukon, the, to the Tahoe, um, uh, Suburban, I believe has the same thing too. And so does the Escalade. Um, there's two different models that you're going to look for. So what you're going to look for is um, the RPO code of uh, JL4, uh, which is an active brake control. Um, this one is a little bit more expensive. That's what this truck has. Um, it's a little bit more expensive because it has an extra couple lines in there and things like that too. Um, if you didn't have that, if it doesn't have that JL4 code, then you don't have to worry about it. You can get the the cheaper one, which I think the cheaper one's like $82 or something like that. So to me, spending that kind of money, it's, it's like I said before, it's a no brainer, um, that I don't have to play around with the lines. The only thing is, um, you'll have to bend some of the, some of the, um, the brake hoses when they come out of the box, um, because they, they bend them just for shipping purposes. So they could put them in a smaller box, which the box ends up being pretty big anyway. Um, so they have markings on it where you would need to bend it back out. Um, they are labeled in a way. Um, if you look, there's tags on them. Uh, I'll show you that in a minute, but there's tags on them. And each one of the tags kind of shows like um, one is, uh, you know, from the, the master cylinder to the proportioning valve, uh, the other one to the ABC control box. Um, and then there's ones that say like, LF, left front, R, 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 right rear, LR, left rear, things like that. So um, they are somewhat labeled in a way that you can, you can see what it is. Um, but, you know, getting them out and putting them, putting them back in with these is, is pretty much the hardest part of it. Um, so I've already started a little, a little bit, but let me show you um, where the RPO codes are in the truck, just so you know that if if you're looking to do this and you're looking to purchase this, you're going to have to know whether you have that JL4 code or not. Okay, so your RPO codes are going to be in your glove box right here. So if you look in these codes here and you see, and they're, they're, um, they're alphabetical order in there too. So if you see code JL4 in there, you need to get the more expensive kit. All right, so forgive me if you get a little uh, wind noise. Like I said, it's really windy today, and it's cold. I think the wind chill, it's its like getting down into the teens right now. Um, so basically, this is part of the kit. I already have some of the lines already in. Um, I did some of the work already just to try and get some things 
going here, but it's basically what it is. You'll see, like on each one of these tags, this is what I was talking about. You know, um, these are the the tags here. You'll see um, MC Master Cylinder. Um, there's a couple. Like if you look at this one here, it says R R F, right? So this is a right front. There's, I believe there's a right front one and a right front two, or, or I think that's how they have it set up here. Um, because one goes from the front of the car to the ABS block. And then like uh, the rear ones, um, especially have one that go to the ABS block and then from the ABS block to the back wheel. So it changes things up a little bit there. So, of course, the first thing I did was I jacked up the truck a little bit um, just to get a little extra working room. You can take the tire off, but I found that it wasn't really necessary. <clears throat> but you definitely want to take the inner fender wells out in the front and in the rear, too, when you get to work on it there. But this is pretty much what you're going to be looking at, right? So you have here, this is for your front driver's side, and then all those lines pass through. They go down the... Um, uh, they go down the frame and they go back into the uh, the ABS block there. Let's see, these lines here, this is basically what you're going to see. These braided steel lines right there, those are going to be replaced. And it's all just going to be steel lines, right? So as you can see, I already did a few of them in there, right? So that one is the one that goes over to here, the ABC control. And that one I already replaced. All right, so you can see these two right up here. These are the lines that are in the master cylinder, right? Those two lines right there, that's your master cylinder. And those are the lines that go down to the proportioning valve, which is right in here. And you'll see those two lines right there, and right there. And then that line in the back over here is the one that comes up to the ABC control. That's right up in here. So, what I'm going to end up doing probably now is I'm going to work on the um, the front passenger side one because that one comes uh, <clears throat> from here across, all the way across to the front of the, uh, the truck on the other side. I'll try and see if I can get that one off and at least leave it at that for today because um, it is getting a little bit later in the day and it's starting to get even colder, so... Um, that would be a good stopping point for today. And then I can start back up tomorrow and try to get the rest of these lines that go all the way back to the ABS pump. Okay, so these are the lines that came off up by the master cylinder. They weren't really in terrible shape, but obviously they weren't bad enough shape. Um, you know, especially if we look at this one here, it looks like it was already starting to rust here. So it's better off that all the lines were replaced. Okay, so looking up from the bottom side here, there's a shield that's right here up in the front of the frame rail that realistically, to make it, to make it easier on you, you want to take this out. Because if you look back here, right there is your brake line that goes from the driver's side over to the passenger side. So it'll make it easier if you get this out of the way, just so you have a little bit more access room, especially with the, uh, the pre-bent lines. All right, everyone, so today is a new day. Um, it's still just as cold as it was yesterday, but at least the, uh, the wind has died down a little bit. So I'm gonna start off where I left off yesterday. All right, so to show you where I left off yesterday, um, this is where I left off. I had this tucked in just so nobody would bump into it, but I ran the passenger side front line all the way through. Now one thing that you're really this one's a pain in the ass um you're going to have to because this is probably this actually is the longest with the exception of the rear this is the longest um, one that you have to run so what i found the easiest way to do it is like i showed you before you take that um you take that um that guard up in the front off and you can feed it through um i found that um putting it in through here you can see where I sent it through. Going right through here, through the frame, across the other side. You're gonna have to you're gonna have to bend this a little bit. 
Um, they are pre-bent, like I said, but you're going to have to bend this around a little bit because there's no other way of getting such a long, um, a long tube across everything because it actually goes up, up over the frame rail down and then across and then up over the frame rail and then out this way to the passenger side wheel and then into the line on the other side. I'll show you what that looks like over here. Okay, so this is how it comes out on the other side, up over the frame rail, and then into the flex hose here. So this one was definitely a pain to get to. Um, like I said, it was just too cold yesterday for me to continue, so I had to stop where I was. So now today, what I've been doing is um, trying to get everything to the ABS block because that's pretty much where you're going to um, you're going to have to disconnect these lines. All the lines that come through um, are going down here, right? along the frame rail. You can see I have a couple of these sliced already. Um, they're going down through the frame rail, by the body mount, down the frame, up over the frame, and then into the ABS block. I'll show you what the ABS block looks like in a minute, but this is so far what I've been able to get that's on the ABS block. So you have, and this is going to help you out if you do this, you have your this is the passenger side of the block. This is the driver side of the block. So you have your left front, your right front. And then um, I didn't do the rears yet, but I believe this is left rear and then right rear. Um, those actually were replaced recently. I could see that they were replaced with the coated line. So I might not do those right away only because like I said, it's just too damn cold. It's not worth the effort if they're not, um, if they're not crusty. Then what you have is the bottom side. These go to the proportioning valve. So when you're looking at the proportioning valve, you can see my little drawing here. These two lines go up to the master cylinder. The left side, the lower side, is what I have listed here. The left proportioning valve. And then the R side here is what I have here. Right proportioning valve. So the easiest way to do it is to make yourself a little drawing or you could go by that drawing that I had there and just go down and cut all the lines out. It's going to give you enough room to where you can get underneath it and you can start feeding your lines through without having to play around with things because these clips suck. They absolutely suck trying to get them apart. There's one here. There's one um, pretty much like directly under here underneath the car and then on the frame rail on the top side which you're never going to get to there's one of these there's one of these clips uh, maybe this one's a better one there's one of these clips right here and i tried for for the life of me i tried to get that out of there and it didn't work so what i did was i just cracked the hell out of it and it's over here somewhere I just beat the hell out of it and took it off. That's what's on top of the frame rail. And honestly, these lines are never coming through that. So you're gonna have to break this thing off. So like I said, this is the ABS block. And this is what I had, um, this is what I had the drawing of. So what you had is your left front wheel, your right front wheel on the top, and then you can see back there, those two lines right there look like they're recent, recently new. Those are the back ones, so I'm not doing those now. You have your um, right side proportioning valve and your left side proportioning valve. So you're really not working with a lot of room in here. I mean, I really don't have much room to play around. So it's easier to take these all out, take the ones out that you're replacing, Make sure you write down which one is which. Cut all the lines out. And then start putting the new lines in. Alright, so the easiest way that I found to get these lines out was to basically just start nipping away little by little by little by little. I chopped off at the front here um, 
chopped off where it went through the body, chopped off underneath, and then when it goes up over the frame, I disconnect it from the ABS pump and then took that section out. So it was easier to do it that way than it was to try and pull everything out. And you're not trying to save anything anyway, so what the hell's the difference? So um, now that everything is out, I'm gonna start putting the lines back in. And <clears throat> the way that we're gonna do this here is I'm gonna start with this right front, the passenger front, because these two lines are already in. I'm gonna do the passenger front, and then I'm gonna do the driver side front, and then I'm going to do the left proportioning valve, and then I'll do the right proportioning valve, kind of basically working my way from the inside out to make it from top, top um, center out, and then lower center out. That'll make it a little bit easier when you're putting the lines through. You'll be able to get to these lines with better access than on the ABS pump. So I'm going to get to that and then I'll show you what it is after I have all the lines in. All right, so if you take a look there, you can see what I did here. Um, the top uh, two lines on the left, uh, those are the ones that go to the front. Uh, the bottom two lines, those were the stainless ones that go over to the proportioning valve. The other two I just put back in there for now. Um, they were in pretty good shape. Uh, it's, it's just too cold out to, uh, to do all the lines right now. So that'll be for a future, uh, a future reference. And then if you take a look in here, you can see all the lines. Now, everything is just basically laid in here. I don't have anything really snapped into place. Um, it was more or less, I just wanted to get the lines in. Um, you can see that the one that goes cross over here to the passenger front. Um, I just wanted to get all the lines in place and get the um, uh, get the brake system bled out. Um, and then I can do, you know, all the all the line management in there just to get everything in place. So I do have two issues that I'm working with. One of the reasons why it took so long for this video to um, <laughs> to be built was because of the ABS pump. The one that I pulled out of there um everything seemed to come out okay this one over here it took a lot of force to get that line out and i'm not sure if there was something wrong with it if somebody had worked on it before but it did not come out easy whatsoever and what ended up happening is you have the bracket that's around this and you can see that in the the previous section there um I was putting this back together and this line was not going together straight. I thought I had it in there straight. I mean, you know, it happens to the best of us, but as you can see, there's no threads left in there. Um, so this ended up stripping out. So of course, being that I have the upgraded brake system on this truck, it's kind of hard to find one that actually, um, that's that's the same one as this um it took a little bit of time i had some local people that said they had it and then i was kind of getting getting the shaft with them doing the run around and of course they're you know they went non-responsive so i had to find it on ebay because i wasn't about to spend four hundred dollars on a brand new abs pump on this truck um, so the one that you just saw is the actual replacement that i put in there and you know, now everything is there, it's sealed, everything is good to go. But now I have another problem that I have to deal with. And that problem, of course, is rust. So it's something that we all deal with up in the north. If you live in any kind of cold climate, you deal with this. Um, it's part of life. It's just the way that things are. You know, we don't get, uh, we don't get the luxury of having cars that are completely rust-free. So we have to deal with this crap. So what I had was after I got everything in, I filled up the uh, the brake master cylinder. I was about to bleed the brake lines out. Um, I had an issue with the driver's side rear. Um, the bleeder valve came out no problem, but the hole that was in there was, um, it just had gunk in it, so it wasn't actually bleeding out. So I was able to get that cleared out, was able to bleed that line no problem. Then I went to the passenger side rear, and as soon as I put as soon as I put my socket on there 
I went to go take that bleeder screw off. It was in good condition. Um, you know, and, and I let it sit with the penetrating fluid. Um, as soon as I went to go loosen that thing up, it snapped right off. So I left it where it was. I said, you know what? I'm not going to dig around with that right now. Move to the front. Well, the front blade, the front bleeder screws are, um, they're just completely rusted away. There's no nut left on them. I can't get anything on it. It's basically going to be, um, I'm going to have to see if I can get some heat on it and, uh, and work those free. Hopefully I can, and then we can bleed the brakes out and, you know, then we can move forward. Um, but that rear, um, that rear passenger side one, I I'm pretty well screwed on that. I think I need to get a new caliper at this point only because I tried removing it. Um, and when I put some heat on it, um, and I put, I've had it sitting for days and penetrating, you know, soaking penetrating fluid. Um, as soon as I put some heat on it and I put a, um, I put an extractor in there, it actually broke the extractor inside of the bleeder screw. So th you can't get those out once they're hardened material, they're hardened steel. Um, you're not going to get that out. So I think at this point it's, the caliper on the rear uh, rear passenger side, and then I'm gonna have to see if I can break the the front two free, um, but that's gonna be for another video. So if you uh, if you like this kind of content, do me a favor, give me a like, share, subscribe if you're interested in uh, keeping an eye on this Yukon and seeing what transpires and how things are gonna work out in the future. And uh, I hope everybody's being safe, and I'll catch you in the next video.